All right, guys, finally got these fender flares on. Got them cut and fitting. Um, they're looking pretty dang good. We're gonna dive into this video, show you guys exactly how we made that happen. Um, but in the meantime, boy, excuse the mess in the garage, but got some aftermarket headlights, front and rear bumper. Um, and then look at that. We're gonna do the 2011, 2016 front end conversion. So let's get after it. I just gave the beast a quick wipe down just to knock the dust and pollen off of it. Um, the reason is I'm undecided if I want to do these fender flares or not. So I want to get some before and after shots. Uh, I'm going to mock up these rear fender flares. So there's kind of how it sits without. And these tires are. 35 1250s and I really like how they sit in the fender fender wells you know they're right at kind of the edge so my fear is if I go with fender flares I'm gonna have to upsize the tires which was I was getting new tires and wheels anyway so it's the right time to do it I just haven't decided if I like the stock look or I'm gonna like the fender flare look, but we'll give it a look. See here, we'll check it out here in just a minute. Another issue I'm having is trying to find replacements for these moldings. As you can see here, I don't have one here. This was just painted. Um, I had this done just about two years ago. I can't find a replacement piece for this guy. So when you're a long ways away, it looks fine. But even, you know, all of these are starting to let go. So, and finding, I can, I can obviously just, you know, re-glue that one down, re-tape that one down. But it's, finding the replacement for this has been impossible. So, I'm thinking when the truck gets repainted, those may just be gone. And plus, I'm going to have to remove them to install the fender flares right now anyway. in the way the truck looks without the body molding on it so these fender flares are obviously for a 99 to 05 super duty and so they don't fit perfect I wish they fit a little better I was hoping this side was just bad but both sides have that gap 
So I'm definitely gonna have to section this to slide that up. The bigger issue is right where this door hits, it's right on where the bolt would be. So I've been going back and forth on this forever. I don't wanna force it and kind of make it fit one side or the other. It, it doesn't look right. This is where it wants to sit. That's where it's happy. So if you come to this side, what I'm debating doing, and like I said, both of these fit like that. So it's gonna take a little trimming. But what I'm planning on doing is filling this one in. So that one will be gone and then still make the cut right through it. So the cut will still cut right through there and down, but it'll be, that that bolt will be gone. That's kind of my plan right now. So we're gonna, I think we're gonna give this a shot. There's no turning back once we do this. So I had picked up some quarter inch thick ABS plastic and some eighth inch ABS plastic since I knew I was going to be doing some some modifications. Then I got this plastic weld. It's actually a putty. It's supposed to be good for ABS bumpers, trim pieces, things like that, and it's sandable and paintable. So hopefully this this sticks it together pretty decently. So, I've been doing some grinding and filing, so I've got it cut at an angle there. And then the same thing, kind of around. Fits in there pretty good now. So, it's sitting in there really nice. It's a nice plug. As you can see, there's still a gap up here. So, I'm actually going to take some of the eighth inch and glue that to the top of this and just fill in this gap. Sorry. Fill in this gap a little bit more. So, I took the tape off the top just to mark it on this eighth inch piece. The sides that the two ABS pieces are going to be joined together, scuffed them up with some 80 grit so they have some good good tooth for the for the bonding. a somewhat good shot of this so I've kind of sanded it down cleaned it up this uh, JB plastic putty epoxy weld stuff it sands really good just like it says it's supposed to so it's getting it's getting there so there's kind of gonna be the plug to fill that in the rest of it will be filled in with the JB weld and then Man, it should be able to sand it down and prime it. We're getting pretty close here. All right, I got the, the plug all scuffed up on all sides. I've scuffed up the hole here. So we should have plenty of tooth here for this, this putty to, to hold. Just added another really thin layer just kind of over the top 
and I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll sand it down and see where we're at. All right, so it's been setting, it's all cured. Just got some 120 grit sandpaper here to kind of see if we can smooth this out a little bit, see where the low spots are at. So after about 30 minutes of sanding or so, it's uh, it's actually looking really good. Come on, zoom, focus right there. Okay, got the hole filled, got the fender back up on here. Um, got it, it's only held on by this one right now. So, like I said, there's no holes that line up here. So, I'm gonna have to take the drill and make some holes there and get this thing mounted where it's gonna sit. And that way I know precisely where to make the cut. After I ran the drill through and got this thing mounted in at least three spots and sitting where it's going to sit, I marked where the door comes through. I did it by, it's actually really hard to find it, especially from underneath. So what it is, I ran my finger underneath here to where I felt where the door was. And then I started the tape there and then came straight out from the bottom and then stood back and then lined it right up with the door seal or the door gap. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna take it off now, take it to the shop and cut it. And you can see, I mean, it goes dead center through that spot we had to fill. So that's gonna be some tough cutting right there. Cause we All right, so we got it. Nothing like taking a brand new fender flare and, and cutting it up. So, yeah, you can see the, that's the part that we filled earlier. Got some gunk on, but you can see the different layers. That's kind of neat. That worked really good. Um, and here it is on this side. That's the one that we filled. And then we'll just clean all this up here and we'll go do a little test fit. trimmed just a another eighth of an inch or so off and man she's looking good now so there we go now I'm going to take the eighth inch thick ABS and fill this gap with it that's my plan So I simply used this piece right here to match, to get the body curve. And once I cut that out, I'll put it up there and I'll trace the, the outside. Got it fitting good, just lots of little cutting and trimming and sanding and making sure it's sitting right. And then I just held it up against there and worked off the back side of it. So patience is the key here. This took a whole lot of time to sit in here with the Dremel, just slowly whittling on this ABS until I got it to sit in there really nice. So now that this piece is trimmed to fit, now we can take it into the shop, take everything apart and glue this piece in there. All right, we're gonna scuff these edges up to make sure, again, the glue has some, some good tooth here to bite onto. And same thing, scuffing this piece up really good. Make sure we get really good bond in here.
right, I've got this glued in now. Um, while this is setting up to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse and repeat the process on this other fender flare from the right side of the truck. So here it is with the first test fit. And again, it winds up really nice here at the top. Down at the bottom, it starts to get off a little bit, but this isn't bolted in. So once I secure that, we should be sitting really good. All right, before I work on the front half of that, I wanna get this thing sitting right. As you can see, there's a big gap and then it hits right here, and then again, the big gap down here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I marked where it's hitting. I'm gonna clean some of this up, remove some material to get it to sit, hopefully in a little bit tighter there, and then we'll work on closing this gap up. So I've already decreased the gap by more than half. So it's just a process of taking it on and off, mark where it's hitting, take a little bit off, mount back up. Mark where it's hitting, take a little bit off, mount it back up. So I do suggest though, if you're not getting your vehicle painted, put some painter's tape all along the side of your vehicle because taking these things on and off, it's definitely, of course I can't even see them right now, it's definitely scuffing the paint. So pulling this fender on and off you can tell it's it's scuffing the paint so definitely cover this in painters tape if you're not gonna get the vehicle painted all right that was about two more iterations of on and off and we are there she's tucked in really nice to the body now we got to figure out how we're going to handle this um, i don't really want to section it from in the middle because then that's going to pull these closer together it may not look right so i think i'm going to try to do something down here cut it here and then lift this up Let's see if i can make all this work so what i did is i took that same striping tape and i just lined it up can see the body panel right there sticking right below the tape on the left hand side and step back and try to draw a straight line to where it lines up with the body panel on the back side so the thought is I'm gonna cut on the bottom side of this tape and then hopefully we can basically take this piece and slide it up and make this bottom right there What you think, bud? Does that look good? Yeah. All right. Tell them that we cut it. It hit it. And then this line, it we're going to cut it again right cut here, right? Again. Yeah. And then we're going to see if we can make this, bo glue this bottom piece onto here, right? Onto here, right? And then maybe it'll work. You think it's going to work? Yeah. All right. Let's give it a shot. So this was the original line that I cut, cut it right there, um, there, actually it was like this, well, I can pick it up, it was like this, so cut that out, once I had that cut out, what I did is I just marked a line about half an inch all the way around from the top of these curves, and then cut this piece off of that. And then now we're gonna go in and glue this on like that. And I think that's gonna work pretty dang good. Got this bottom piece cut and glued on. It's fitting pretty good around here. I am gonna have to, to clean this up a little bit on the corner. But other than that, 
it's sitting really good all the way down the side of the truck. So next step is going to be mocking up this front piece here. Um, so obviously I want to fill it just like I filled that one. So first thing I did was kind of trace the outline and start getting the plate done. And then that plate is going to fill the inside of this like that. And then, so then that'll be what you see when you open the door. So I'm gonna glue this together and then I'm gonna trim it all out. After some dremeling and a little bit of sanding, we got her all cleaned up. So guys, this is the plastic weld adhesive I've been using. Uh, it's the sandable, paintable, JB Weld stuff. Um, but this is the putty form. And I tell you what, what's difficult about the putty stuff is that once you mix it, it's hard to smear and it after just like a minute or two, it starts getting so tough that it's hard to really get into places. So as you can see, I'm trying to figure out how to show this. You can see how dry it was getting when I was adding it here. Even though I was trying to smash it in and work it in with my finger, it still did not bond very good down here. Now the rest of this where it was fresh, and you can't get that apart at all. But down here, it's starting to come apart. So what I'm doing is I ran down and got some of this, um, it's a two part epoxy. Um, so it's liquid form, obviously. And I'm gonna try to clean some of this out and then I'm gonna give this a shot and see what I think about it. See if it holds this stuff a lot better. So I'm gonna sand again, all in here, rough all this up again really good before I try this. Now I will say this putty was fantastic for doing like filling the holes and stuff. So I think I would still recommend using the putty for this part for plugging that hole because that just worked out really, really good. Um, but we'll see if I like this better for gluing the other sections together. And then if this works, that's how I'm gonna do that other fender and then we'll give it a shot. When I cut and sectioned this bottom or this rear part of the fender where I had to shorten it about an inch and a half, instead of just having just a straight butt joint like that, I used the section that I cut out to, to double it. That way I just had more surface area to glue to. So this is the driver's side rear fender, the first one that I cut and made this plate for it. So just to test this this bond of this the putty that I was using, I just pulled on it just to see if it would hold and sure enough, it let go. All right, so the verdict is in. Remember this piece was pulling apart. I'm at the bottom here. So I did the uh, this uh, high strength structural adhesive from JB Weld, the epoxy plastic bonder. And man, I tell you what, this thing is not coming apart. I can just bend the heck out of it. So this is this is what I'm gonna use, that's it. Don't bother with this, except for filling the uh, pocket if you're gonna do that. But as far as bonding the pieces together, this is the way to go.
So here's the first look at what it's gonna look like mounted up. Obviously the Bondo is, is pink, so that kind of sticks out a lot right now. But you can, if you match these arcs up, they're, they're at the right height, but it's gonna, you know, it's almost like a flat spot for three quarters of an inch right there. But when you look at it from the side, I mean, it looks, it looks good. It's just, this piece right here is just, is just taped into place, but that's where it would, it's gonna sit once I figure out how to mount them. But if you follow these arcs, if I can get it in the camera, I mean, they are lined up. I think that's how it's gonna sit. And if you remember that one pocket, that one bolt hole like that right here was, was right here. All right, now, last thing is to figure out how to mount this front piece. And then we can finish the rest of the body work. just using some 400 grit sandpaper here to, to smooth out this body filler. Let's see if I can get in here close. Overall, it looks really good. There's a few little pinholes right there. I think you can see, and that's on the, the front side. And then on the top, I think I just didn't sand very I didn't sand good enough up here, good enough, uh, better. I should have sanded better. So I'm gonna probably fill those pinholes again on the side and then hit this again with some sandpaper and hopefully finish that off. But the rest of it actually looks really good. Just knocked out the body filler Bondo on this front piece. Just put it on there so I'll let it dry and then we'll sand this down and get it primed in. All right, trying to figure out how to mount this front piece that's on here. So I'm just holding it in place now, but here's my plan. So I think what I'm going to do is use this lip that's right here to put rivets through. Um, so I bought this eighth inch aluminum and I'm going to bend 90s in it and basically put a 90 on the back side. So one side of the 90 will be riveted to here. The other side of the 90 will go through the door right here on this seam. So I plan to do, you know, one up top, one down here towards the bottom and then probably one along this bottom edge right here to capture the bottom of this thing. What's really hard to capture in these videos is the amount of time that I'm spending trying to get this body line to match up really good. And I know the molding that you get, you know, that goes in between the fender flare and the and the body should help correct any of the imperfections, but still it just, just taking like thousands off at a time and just trying to really tighten up these gaps takes a extremely, extremely long amount of time. For these brackets, what I have to realize is that the inside of this is eighth inch ABS. So I'm gonna have to offset the bracket an eighth of an inch to ensure that the outside of the ABS will uh, be flush with this, this door. 
So the problem is you start running out of room. If I set that off an eighth of an inch, and now I don't have much room to drill through the backside here on this lip. But it's just enough, but it's going to be tight. All right, so this is kind of the thought. Rivet from these two to the door, and then this will be riveted to that eighth inch ABS. And one there, one up here towards the top, and I think we'll be good. So I got this kind of setting in place. Just gonna see how this is gonna work out here. All right, now I'll have to take it apart and mark where these holes are at on the inside. Man, they are gonna be really close to that lip right there. All right, I'm gonna put one rivet on each side just for test fitting purposes, just to make sure everything's gonna work. She's mounted. Got it all mounted up. I just put one rivet on the inside because I'm gonna have to drill them out to take them off for paint because the whole truck's going to paint in another month. So just got one in there that I'm gonna have to drill out, but man, that feels good. And that's with only one of the rivets in there. So this is literally the first time I've tried to shut the door Well, that looks like complete crap. I'm gonna try to adjust the brackets a little bit, see if I can get this body line, these uh, this door gap to match correctly. It looks about the way it should look at the bottom. Maybe a little wide at the bottom, but it's definitely too narrow at the top. All right, so after just about five minutes of finagling with the brackets, just tweaking them just a touch, man, that looks that looks like how it should look there. So they are still riveted in. They just need to just a little tweaking to make it sit like that. Now, the only thing I'm slightly don't like is that it, and I'm sure you'd have to really be looking at it, but there is like a, maybe a quarter of an inch where this one sits in just a little bit further. Um, other than that, I think they came out pretty damn decent. And again, if you're not sitting here looking like this, I mean, right down the body line, you can see it's just a touch. And it looks like there's a gap right here, really. But when you look at the, the arcs, these arcs all line up so that's how she's sitting and that's how it's gonna stay well, there it is so I I honestly really like the look it was an ungodly amount of work to make it happen though All right, so finally, we have got the rear fender flares mocked up 
on the truck. So obviously I'm not gonna do the, the rubber molding that's gonna really clean it up or the stainless steel uh, bolts until the truck gets painted. So until, on the, until the fender flares get painted. So there we go. I'm telling you guys, this was more work than, than pulling the engine of this thing. Um, I have an ungodly amount of hours in body work and figuring out how to make all this work. But there we go. It definitely, I'll tell you what, you walk outside now and you look at the truck and man, it just, it definitely stands out. All right, guys, next video will be the front end conversion. And as you can see, I didn't go with stock 1116 bumpers or the stock 11 to 16 headlights. So in the rear bumpers back there in that box, we've got the fenders, we've got the grill in there, the grill upper and lower support brackets. Next video, guys, we're going to dig in and start getting this front end conversion knocked out.